we go. It is given that the set of complex numbers C is a commutative ring with the multiplicative identity equal to 1. Let Z equal A plus CI be any non-zero complex number. It can be shown that C is a field if there exists Z2, satisfying which of the following lovely equations. And we're like, oh my god, that's dense. But here we go, just kind of focusing in on what we need. We need to show that C is a field. All right? So a field is a ring that satisfies a few additional properties. And they've already told us that the uh, C is a commutative ring. So if we need to show that C is a field, we already know that it's a ring because they told us. We already know it's a commutative ring, so it satisfies commu commutativity, or it has the commutative properties. And the other requirements it needs to have is a multiplicative identity and a multiplicative inverse. Well, it tells us that it has a multiplicative identity equal to 1, so that's check. So the only other qualification we need to prove that this thing is a field is it needs to have a multiplicative inverse. And so they're setting this z2 equals x plus yi to be your multiplicative inverse. So we need to show that z2 is the multiplicative inverse for this set. How do we do that? Well, if we take any number, a plus bi, in a set, if you multiply it by the multiplicative inverse, which is x plus yi, it should equal the identity, which is 1. Right? So if you take any number in the set, multiply it by the inverse, it'll bring, back you, bring you back to the identity, which is 1. <laughs> so we're trying to show this. So we got past the ring jargon, and somehow from this, we're going to need to set up a matrix uh, system of equations. So it's just two equations, two unknowns, set up scarily in a matrix format. But basically, this is just like ax plus by is 1, and bx plus ay is 0. So if we can get two equations and two unknowns out of this thing, we're going to be golden. How do we get two equations and two unknowns? Well, we've got... Uh, an equation with real parts and imaginary parts. So we're going to solve this thing down so that the real parts on this side equal to the real parts on that side, and the imaginary parts on this side equal to the imaginary parts on that side, and that's our plan of attack. There we go. Uh, we'll start by distributing, right? So we'll have ax plus ayi, and then plus bxi, right? And then plus BYI squared. And we see that I squared, and we know that I squared is negative 1, right? So since I squared is negative 1, this part is just negative BY, right? B times Y times negative 1, negative BY. So now we gather up all of our real terms and all of our imaginary terms on this side. So AX is real, this guy has an imaginary part, this guy has an imaginary part. Remember this guy became real because I squared is negative 1, so this is just minus BY. And this is the real stuff. And then the imaginary stuff is the leftovers, this plus AYI, and then plus BXI. And that should still equal 1. So we've got the real part and the imaginary part on this side should equal the real part. And then there's no imaginary part, but we can write it as 0i, right? The imaginary part on that side. So the real part over here should equal the real part over there. So ax minus by should be 1. And the imaginary part on this side should be the imaginary part on that side. So ayi plus bxi should equal 0, i, so you divide everything by i if you would like, so just say, you could have factored it out and set the coefficients equal to, equal to each other also. And so these are your two equations with two unknowns. And when you set this up into a matrix form, your two unknowns are this x and the y, and you just kind of write down your coefficients. So you have a 
and minus b and 1. And then you have a and b and 0. a and b and 0. And you can always check it. You do your matrix multiplication. And so ax minus by is 1. And ax plus by is 0. It should be it. Hopefully it's here. I think it's this last one. a minus b. Uh, oh, whoopsie. Caught myself. Uh, this last one, a y b x, right? And it's in the opposite order. This should be the x column. This should be the y column. Ah, did that too quickly. So the b should be here, and the a should be there. So now it's what I was expecting it to be. So your answer is C.